Welcome back, and since we're a cause you do, we're going to believe him. And there's some small semblance of hope for us. If understanding is the first step to reconciliation, then our future together is not entirely cloaked under a shadow of darkness. I want you to know that I feel indebted to you. Even if our symbiosis does fall apart and you desire me to leave you, I want you to believe me when I say that I am thank thankful for the time we have been together. You have given me the opportunity to experience so many emotions and sensations and to experience beauties I have never before. In our whole 30 minutes together. In my book of my life, can I call existence a life? I'm lifeless, therefore I do have right to something. I can at least... I can at last writing something worthwhile. Oh, man. Ugh, the terrible, terrible typos. I feel as if I owe you something, and I try to equalize our relationship a bit more. Give you back something. Before my dutiful part in a symbiosis. Yet, after all I've done, it's hard to think of something that can make any sorts of amends. Perhaps this is the first that I can take. I will forget our past grievances and bestow upon you a greater power. From this moment onwards, you will be blessed by the limit of my powers, boosting your abilities and setting you upon the path of greatness. But I confess this isn't the limit. Despite my desire to make amends, I cannot open the limit of my powers without some sort of permanent commitment from you. If you would perhaps make our symbiosis permanent by destroying the paladin's hammer, then I will commit myself fully. He sighs. I feel like I need to do something more. Is there anything else I can do to you to determine something? Huh. That's interesting. Afraid I can do that, but I will make you a promise. Once the paladin's hammer is destroyed and any risk to my permanent destruction forever gone, I will release my hold on you. I will let you remove any physical form if you choose and rid yourself of me forevermore. I cannot leave you with the hammer, the instrument of my destruction, so close. Let you decide to use it against me while I am defenseless. But once the hammer has been destroyed, I will let you decide the fate of our symbiosis. If you see any chance of redemption and choose to embrace the possibility of symbiosis, then my soul will soar with glee. But if you see no hope, we must part ways. By my reckoning, it is better to hope the next person who finds me sees value in our symbiosis. Then to spend eternity with you if you are miserable and have rejected me. For now, though, I suggest we complete our task and find the paladin and his hammer. Please don't take my words out of context. I am not commanding you to do it. But it does make me a certain level of sense to do so. After all, we are here with the paladin's arrival, doubtless impending. Should we not take advantage of it? I leave the ultimate decision up to you. Okay, that's fine. With this quest, I am entirely in your service and in your debt. Yeah, that's nice. Leave this place if you want. I will not stop you. Yeah. Let's see. I will stay. Thank, Thank you, my oh. beloved Symbiote. Random. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Random voice. Saying. You will not regret your decision. I will remain silent unless you wish to speak to me directly. Should you decide to rest while waiting for the Paladin's arrival, I will watch over you. For now, though, I bid you farewell, my Symbiote. Closing. Okay. Good. That was kind of an extended conversation, really. Wow. Now I wait for Pelu here, I guess. That's okay. I can... Where am I here? What are we doing? Oh, jeez. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Oh, uh, it doesn't want us to wait? Oh, wait, I want to take that torch down before I do that, though. Alright, now we wait. Probably, maybe, I don't know. Actually, I will save first, though, unless he's already here. Doesn't seem like it, though. Alright, I had to get rid of the, the save. Okay, now we can wait for a few more hours. Huh. Um. Maybe we're supposed to go in a thing? I said to wait though. Huh. 
Can't go in the bar. Yeah, there's nothing here. As you emerge from the armorer's realm back into the real world, you suddenly realize something is very wrong. It does not take you long to realize that the central crypt has been defiled. The corpses of the Pelu family have been exhumed in blood from victims you cannot even fathom trickles down the walls. In horror, you suddenly re see that in your absence, the armor has used your body to desecrate the Pelu's family final resting place in an attempt to draw out the paladin. Okay, whatever. Hi, everybody! Oh, it was you who took the armor of Malevolence. Oh, he has a voice now, cool. I had long held the suspicion, but it was Lucius Malin who had taken the armor. Though for what reason, I could not guess. But seeing you standing here now, calmly wearing the armor, and... The expression darkens. I'm wallowing in the blood and dismembered remains of my departed family. Yep. I now know that I was mistaken. Cause you do! Based on your appearance here, which in turn coincides with the coincidental deaths of two of the three people involved in the armor's creation. I believe that it is safe to say, but it was you who killed the Enchanter and the Blacksmith. Yeah, what are you going to do now, about it? only one question remains. Have you been forced to perform these actions under duress? Or have you embraced the armor's idea of symbiosis? Let's see... He has the hammer, doesn't he? So he can break the armor. So we want to lie to him, probably. The armor forced me! I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Every day I find myself constantly surrounded by those who cower and submit when intimidated. Indeed, many times in my life have I come across the subject of fiendish endeavors. Who listen, learned, and emulated like good students when ordered to do so by an intimidating presence. Yet your cowardice and weak-willed nature ultimately cost you greatly. The arm itself, as you see, was designed in my apprentice, by my apprentice Lucius as the final test for the paladin in training. Oh, he just gave away the name. A trial pitting the wearer's abilities, faith and moral rigidity, rigidity against the coercive nature of the- Oh, shoot. Cowering with your tail between your legs as your master begs you into submission. In doing so, you've ultimately sealed your own fate. The more the armor gets what it wants, the more you get in the habit of submitting to its will. The less symbiotic the, the relationship becomes. To the armor, calling your- was symbolic. Your relationship, yeah. His actions speak louder than a silver tongue. Surely you've noticed from the day- you first met, he has beaten you into submission time and time again, thus he parasites you in order to survive. Much as a uh, virus parasites its host in order to ensure its survival. Once the hammer is gone and you will forever be encased inside the armor, you will be entirely dependent on him due to the fact that you will share control of your body. And he doesn't actually need anything from you anymore. You have nothing you can use as leverage to command his mutual cooperation, you will become a puppet to his whims. So knowing that, do you still want to allow the armor to destroy the hammer that I carry? Let's see... I want to free myself from the armor. You say that, but do you really mean it? One who is submitted to the armor, or who has succumbed to him, would not be above touting whatever lies are necessary. Darn it! He's, he's on to us. There are too many questions and too many coincidences for me to simply take your word and give you the hammer. What do you plan to do? Do you think you can justify your actions beneath the armor's control? I can justify my actions. I will be the judge of that, not you. Let us start from the beginning, then. What of the blacksmith? I find it somewhat suspicious that one of those responsible for the armor's creation would be the first to die by, my, by his malevolent hands. What say you to that? I did not yet know how to resist. How so? Are you cowardly that you have to fight an inner battle, or so submissive that you never stood up to one who sought to intimidate you? I have been fighting a turbulent battle inside of myself since you were little more than a child. The demons I battled in the real world were nothing compared to the demons I faced within my own mind. Yet I triumphed because I had the courage and resolve to see the battle through to the end. So tell me now, how could you not know how to resist the armor? We learned from our mistakes. I suppose you are right. How can one know how to resist if one hasn't tried and failed at that task? 
All right, you managed to justify the death of the blacksmith. What of the enchanter? He attacked me. Why would he do such a thing? Out of fear. Yes, he knew what the armor was capable of, and he knew that he couldn't destroy it by himself. He also knew how the armor's self-preservation instinct operated. And when he saw you arrive by wearing it, he immediately assumed you had lost control. Very well, I can accept that he was killed in self-defense. But there's one last unanswered question. We shall ignore the likely death of my apprentice, Horatio, simply because I haven't verified it for myself. But what amount of... What of the moment of weakness only moments ago, where the armor presumably took control of you in order to defile this crept? I was not in the real world. Would you care me to tell me where you were if not in the real world? I was in the armor's realm. Doing what, exactly? Fueling the armor's inner conflict? He looks perplexed, and he lowers his weapon somewhat, no longer intent on killing you. Your words make little sense to me, but I can see the truth in your eyes when you speak. Perhaps you would best tell me your whole story. Tell him the story. Your story makes for intriguing listening. I knew that the armor was sentient, and I knew that, to a certain extent, that it would emulate a living being. Yet I did not know it was possessed of such an unstable rationale, nor that it had the capacity to experience insanity in such a brutal way. I had always believed it was still bound by the limitations that Lucius put in place, but it would seem it has evolved far uh, past that. He sighs. Take for hammer, then. <laughs> Though I may be an old fool, to have trusted to one under the armor's fraud, I will give it to you on faith. Wield the hammer, and enter the armor's realm. There you can use it to begin to break the bonds and tie him to you. Be ready, for the battle will last as long as necessary to force that malevolent fiend from your mind. You may be in for a long night. Good luck. The Hammer. Hellyer has given me the hammer. To simply destroy the armor while he was in my mind would have, would have unforeseen consequences. Thus I need to enter the armor's realm and fight the armor one last time. I do need to hit him... Do not need to hit him with the hammer, merely possess it for long enough to separate the realm from my mind. This will be the end of the armor of malevolence. Okay, so we've got the hammer, but I'm not entirely sure how to destroy it. So we're going to make a save here, so in case I mess up, I can still get rid of it somehow. Let's see, how would I destroy the hammer? Where's Pelu going? He's left. Okay. Not sure how to destroy this thing. Maybe I do have to enter the the realm somehow. Maybe he can destroy it. What am I looking for? Oh, yeah. Here we go. I have a feeling I've missed something. I don't know. I've arrived in the armor's realm for my final battle. Oh, wait. I simply duplicate myself until... Ah, uh, hmm... This isn't what I want. 